The 8th of May 2024 edition of AEW Dynamite really shocked me and I don't think I'm the only one who was surprised and caught off guard by this episode of AEW Dynamite. So we're going to discuss all that and more as we discuss this past week of AEW Dynamite and I'm thinking of doing these weekly so leave a like if you want to see that and yeah let's talk about it. Let's talk about this past Wednesday's AEW Dynamite. Before we begin discussing yesterday's episode, let's quickly recap the previous week of AEW Dynamite on May 1st, as on that show we saw Christian Cage be revealed as Swerve Strickland's challenger at Double or Nothing, Adam Copeland continued his feud with the House of Black, retaining his TNT gold against Buddy Matthews, Orange Cassidy and Trent Beretta continued their breakup storyline as Cassidy teased an alliance with Don Callis, and we of course saw Kenny Omega get beaten down by the elite it was an action-packed dynamite with lots of stories being started and continued but as the card for the most recent dynamite was starting to get announced yeah there'd be some continuation from the previous week announced for the card but overall this week's aew dynamite on paper looked pretty damn weak and not gonna lie i was genuinely thinking we were probably in for one of the worst dynamites of the year but getting into the show we start off this week's episode of aew dynamite with orange cassidy taking on his former best friend's ally trent beretta and this match was exactly what it should have been it was a fast paced no breaks match these two guys are locked in a personal feud so that's exactly how this match should be they were beating the hell out of each other don Callis comes out to ringside and joins the commentary team midway through the match and the ending of the match saw Trent destroying Orange with two pile drivers, a big running knee and then he goes to take the turnbuckle pad off but the ref catches him and while that's going on and while the ref distracted Orange removes a turnbuckle pad for himself, drives Trent headfirst into it and rolls him up for the win, a sneaky win by Cassidy and then post match Trent proceeds to destroy Orange Cassidy just an uncomfortably long beatdown but it's only when Cassidy starts getting his licks back that does Chris Statlander and a team of refs run to break it up. Interesting timing. And Orange Cassidy then walks out with Don Callis. And this storyline is interesting to me. I'm starting to think that Cassidy might be the heel in all of this. This definitely doesn't seem like it's over. It was a tainted finish, the post-match antics. I feel like this story is just getting started. We then go to our next segment as we see footage from earlier in the day, seeing the elite pull in and park in Tony Khan's reserved spot. Tony Khan is still selling the attack. He is reporting remotely, apparently, and I imagine is still wearing the neck brace, at least I like to think so. And we go right from that into Kenny Omega giving a monologue from a hospital bed as he discusses the attack from the elite last week and talks about his respect for FTR and how FTR will be taking on the elite alongside a mystery two other men in an anarchy in the arena match at double or nothing and those two men are gonna be revealed later tonight and next up we get to hear from Serena Deeb who is challenging Tony Storm for her women's title at double or nothing as Serena Deeb cuts a heartfelt promo talking about her time away from AEW and her experience with seizures. She sends a nice message to the fans and uses it to build up to the match, but she's of course interrupted by timeless Tony Storm, who is straight out there and gets on the mic and says that she doesn't give a single solitary shit. And then Tony tries to cheap shot her, but she is caught by Serena and then knocked out cold, and Tony just with a great sell. Yeah, though, nice build to the match. Serena is full babyface now, and I'm looking forward to this match between the two at double or nothing. Next match, though, we've got Mariah May still sporting the old Tony Storm persona, and she's taking on the debuting on AEW TV, at least, Harley Cameron. And I don't know about you, but I wasn't sure what to expect with this match, but I will hold my hands up and say I wasn't really expecting it to be good. Mariah May is brilliant. She is a very good wrestler. But I wasn't familiar with Harley Cameron other than that she'd maybe had a couple of indie matches. But yeah man, I was very pleasantly surprised with this match. I thought it was good stuff from both of them. Mariah is obviously great, but Harley Cameron really showed out and I want to see more of her. So despite Mariah getting the win, it's a successful AEW TV debut for Harley Cameron, I'd say. Post-match though, Harley and Soraya attack Mariah May and Mina Shirakawa of course makes the save with Tony Storm nowhere to be seen. We get Swerve Strickland and Christian Cage going face to face 
good promos from the both of them, especially from Swerve. But the main moment of this segment was the Mogul Embassy turning on Swerve. I wasn't expecting this. It was kind of out of nowhere, like it just happened right then and there. But also, Swerve hardly appears with them anymore, and he's outgrown them anyway. It was the correct time and decision to do this. It was going to happen eventually. Swerve is now a babyface world champ, so they don't need to all be together. He can be world champ. They can go be a trio. It appears as though they aren't joining up with the patriarchy, which is a good thing. I hope they don't. I could be wrong on that, though. And we then get a Willow Nightingale backstage interview. She hypes her match with Mercedes Monet at Double or Nothing. And I would have liked to see these two together on screen in front of the crowd, but whatever. We'll discuss that later. And we then get Jay White versus Rocky Romero. This match was a really good match i really did enjoy this match very solid stuff especially the last couple of minutes with the sequences at the end from rocky romero who was cooking some great near falls great sequences and jay white of course picks up the win and himself and the guns beat down rocky before pack makes the save so it looks like we may be getting death triangle against the bang bang gang soon for those trios titles that will definitely be a great match next we then have chris jericho and big bill just destroying some jobbers post match though jericho cuts a promo and he's very clearly playing that role of a heel who thinks he's a baby face and it wasn't a bad promo it was a pretty decent promo i mean of course it was chris jericho is good on the mic and being real so far the learning tree hasn't been that bad i'm gonna let it play out for now because I can't bear Jericho stables for too long, but just for now, I'm going to let it play out because it's not been too bad, but let's not overexpose it like we always do. And it's main event time as it's Adam Copeland versus Brody King for the TNT title and awesome match. Just an awesome match. A true main event of a TV show, of a TV wrestling show. Closed out the card brilliantly and a great match. Copeland has been so great in AEW and this TNT title run so far has been awesome. Him and Christian really revived that title, my word. There was blood, there was weapons, big table spot. It was a great match and Cope got the win to retain the title. Brody attacked Copeland after the match but Carl O'Reilly made the save and these two are going to face for the title on collision. That match will be fun. And shout out to Copeland man because he has been been working since he came to AEW. I have thoroughly enjoyed his run. However, though, this wasn't the end of the show as we got a surprise overrun, at least it was a surprise to me, and Mercedes Monet is being interviewed. They really gave her the death spot here, and whilst this was a fine promo, I guess, like I said earlier with Willow, I'd much prefer we had the two of them in front of the crowd talking to each other in the ring. These backstage interviews didn't really achieve anything for me and then we end the show with the elite coming out and we get the big reveal for the other two members of anarchy in the arena and while some including me were thinking it would be the motor city machine guns it ended up being eddie kingston and brian danielson so we've got ourselves a star-studded match right here and what better reps for team aew than these two guys kingston is aew through and through and danielson you know he just be giving out fines but yeah that's the end of the show and overall man this show was really solid i'll give it like a b it was yeah just way more solid than i thought it would be than it had any right to be with the card that was announced on paper this didn't look like it was going to be a great show but every match delivered good continuation with storylines as well and i thought this was just a solid wednesday night of wrestling let me know what you thought in the comments down below leave a like if you enjoyed this video and want to see more aew reviews i don't know if i can actually do one next week but i do want to do these weekly so yeah like i said like if you want to see that and subscribe to be the first to see that when it does come out i'll see you all in the next video goodbye and keep on rolling